Hi everybody, uh, hope that you're all safe and you're all doing well. I know I'm repetitive each and every time I, uh, I introduce a lesson to you that we're going to do, uh, wondering how you're doing, and hope you're all doing fine. I want to make uh, one final comment about 3.3 systems of linear equations in not only two variables but in three variables as well. In the last video we looked at an application problem that was dealing with simple interest. And we're going to take a look at a second application problem. There is a bit of difference. The difference is this problem is more inclined to be a mathematical modeling problem. It's not a problem dealing with mixture. It's not a distance problem. It's not a cost problem. It's a problem in which a mathematical model, which is somewhat a formula, a formula is going to be given to us. And we're going to be taking some data and substituting this data into this formula and what it's going to do is come up with a very specific type of function. And this process that we're going to go through to get this function is going to have us solve a system dealing with three linear equations and three variables. So we're going to have you take a look at this board right here and let me just kind of detail some things about it and then I'll shift this paper up and we'll actually take a look at the problem that uh, we are going to do. At this point in the course we have looked at one particular kind of function and it's called a linear function. And a linear function is a function that is actually written in slope-intercept form. It's the value of function f when the domain is x is equal to mx plus b. Linear functions are written in slope intercept form and that is the form of a linear function. But in 3.3 we're going to be looking at another kind of function. It's called a quadratic function. One of the reasons why it's called a quadratic function because one of the major terms of the function is a quadratic term. And remembering back to solving quadratic equations, the quadratic term is the term in which the variable x, let's say, is being taken to the second power. The squared term is the quadratic term. And so I want to have us take a look at this situation right here. The standard form of a quadratic function is the value of f when the domain is x is equal to ax squared, there's the quadratic term, plus bx, there's the linear term, plus c, this is the constant term. This is the standard form of a quadratic function. Now folks, when we get into chapter 8 in this 71 program, chapter 8 will be exclusively dealing with everything quadratic. We will be looking at the different ways of solving quadratic equations. We will then move into looking at quadratic functions in depth and graphing quadratic functions and primarily just looking at everything quadratic as we move into chapter 8. But there's a bit of a prerequisite 
on quadratic functions that's noted in chapter 3, section 3, and it's there because in order to be able to write a quadratic function, if we are given particular kind of data, we have to use a system of linear equations in three variables to be able to come up with that quadratic function. So this is the standard form of the quadratic function, and I also want you to look at the one below it because you know as well as I do from chapter 2 in our program that the value of f when the domain is x, in other words, the f of x means the same thing as y. They're both ranges. y is the same thing as f of x. So y equaling ax squared plus bx plus c is oftentimes the way that a quadratic function is written. So you specifically see y written as maybe opposed to f of x. Now, I just wanted to lead up to something that's going to lead to the problem that we're going to do. Here is what the direction is going to convey to us in terms of what we need to do. The problem is going to identify three different points that happen to be on the graph of a given quadratic function. And I'll, I'll mention this little insert right here. The graph of every quadratic function is a bowl-shaped curve. It can either be a bowl-shaped curve that opens upward, or it can be a bowl-shaped curve that is opening downward. This one happens to be opening upward. And I identified three, just three points that happen to be on this parabola, this curved model right here. This point right here happens to be 2, 0. This point is 3, negative 1. And this point over here is 4, 0. And you know as well as I do, there are many, many other points that make up this graph that we call a parabola. If you are given any three points that happen to be on the graph, anywhere on the graph of a given quadratic function, we are able to take those three points, those three ordered pairs, and substitute them in to the quadratic model that we're going to be showing you in a moment, and we will be able to actually identify the quadratic function that is exhibited, for example, by this graph. Now, I just happen to have written down the quadratic function right here that happens to be the function that gives us this parabola. We are able, once again repeating myself, to take these three points, these three ordered pairs, and substitute them correctly into this quadratic function model right here that I'm waving back and forth with my finger. And when we substitute these three points correctly into this model, we are able to come up with this literal quadratic function that once again happens to be the function whose graph is this very parabola right here. Okay, folks, uh, as we look back up here on this board, I've kind of erased some things that uh, you just recently saw, and I just wanted to pinpoint the standard form of the quadratic function that we're going to be looking at. I've written it as y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. This model we're going to be using, and in a moment, we're going to be substituting values of x here, and the value of y here. And then we'll do a little simplification, and it's going to lead us to equation number one of this linear system, 
of equations with three variables. And then we're going to do it again and come up with a second equation. And we're going to do it a third time and come up with a third equation. And then we're going to solve that system. Again, our goal, we're going to use this model and three points and three given points and we're, the target, the objective, is to come up with a quadratic function that we could then, if we wanted to, we could show its graph. Okay, now here's the given problem. Here's how it is stated right down here at the bottom. Find the quadratic function y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. You see they're giving you the model. They're giving us the model that we're going to use. They're asking us to come up with a quadratic function, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, whose graph passes through the points 1, 4, 2, 1, 3, 4. I've got them right up here. One of the points, 1, 4, a second point, 2, 1, a third point, 3, 4. Now I'm going to take this sheet of paper down, but I just want to make sure that we understand exactly what this little application problem is asking us to do. It is asking us to actually come up with a quadratic function whose graph contains in addition to a whole lot of points, these three ordered pair points. And this is the model that we're going to be using. So I'm going to take this off and here we go and we show you exactly what we're going to do. We start off with the first point, the first ordered pair. Folks, you know that is our X and that is our Y. We're going to take these two integers and we're going to substitute them into this model. And then we're going to do a little mathematics and it's going to lead us to equation number one of our system. In place of y, we're putting four. Bring down the equal. Bring down your a. Make a little house. In place of x, our value of x is 1. To the second power, plus b times the value of x, 1 again, plus c. Now let's do some mathematics. We have 4 is equal to a times 1 squared, which is 1, plus b plus c. And then we'll have 4 is equal to a plus b plus c. Equation number 1 of our system is this one right here. Now, I'm going to write it kind of off to the side. As a matter of fact, I'll kind of squeeze it right down here. And when I write it, I'm going to write the A plus B plus C on the left. And on the right, we'll put 4. So now we have equation number 1. Now I'm going to erase. We stay with our model, and now we go to the second ordered pair. The 2 is your x, the 1 is your y. In place of y, 1 is equal to a times the quantity of x, 2, squared, plus b times the quantity of x, which is 2, plus c. Let's do the math. 
1 is equal to a times 4 plus 2b plus c. And this will come down to 1 is equal to 4a plus 2b plus c. Here's the second equation of the threesome. And I'm going to write the right-hand side back over here on the left in standard form, lining up the variable terms. 4a plus 2b plus c is equal to 1. There's the second one. And now the third. Go to our third point. The ordered pair 3, 4. 3 is your x, 4 is your y. The 4, going in place of y, is equal to a times the quantity of 3 squared plus b times 3 plus c. 4 is equal to a times 3 squared, 9, plus 3b, plus c. 4 is equal to 9a, plus 3b, plus c. And I'll write it down here, 9a, plus 3b, plus c, is equal to 4. Or erase. And I'm going to do a little bit more erasing. But I do want to leave this model up here because it's key. y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. Now let's take these three equations. Notice they're linear. A linear system in three variables. And let's write it in a more centralized way. A plus B plus C is equal to 4. 4A four plus 2B plus C is equal to 1 and 9a plus 3b plus c is equal to 4. Uh, Kent Johnson wants to just step back. Like you want to step back after you copied it down. Make sure that everything is okay. The top one looks good. The middle one looks good. The bottom one looks good. Now, like solving any system of linear equations in three variables, we need to decide on a variable to eliminate from the system. And when we eliminate that variable from the system, this overall system is going to be changed to a system of linear equations in two variables. There will only in a moment be two equations. We currently have three, but in a moment, there'll be two. We're going to call this number one, number two, number three. And we can erase this, and we can erase this information right here as well. All right, now, let's look at it and let's see what might be a good little variable to maybe get rid of. If you look at the coefficients of a, they're all different. 1, 4, and 9. Likewise with the coefficients of b. But the coefficients of c, no, we don't see any opposites, but they're pretty doggone close to being opposites because they all have coefficients of 1. So, let's eliminate c. That's the one that I'm going to eliminate. You can eliminate A, you can eliminate B. I'm going to go ahead and eliminate C. And I'm going to choose equations 1 and 2 for one of my pair. So I'm going to write that down right here. A plus B plus C is equal to 4. And then number 2, 4A plus 
2B plus C is equal to 1. And then for a second pair, you can either pick 1 with 3, or you can pick 2 with 3. It might not be a bad idea just to stay with 1 and go 1 with 3. So, number 1, A plus B plus C is equal to 4. And number 3, 9A plus 3B plus C is equal to 4. Okay. Now we've identified C we're going to get rid of. Let's go back to equations 1 and 2, and let's get rid of C. The coefficients are identical to one another. The coefficients of C in both equations is 1. All we would need to do is likely take equation number 1, the one that's on the top, and if we multiply both sides of equation number 1, by a negative 1. Negative 1 times C will make that a negative 1C. And negative 1C coupled with a positive 1C, they'll go. So let's distribute negative 1 to those three terms. Negative 1A. Negative 1B. Negative 1C is equal to negative 1 times 4, which is negative 4. I don't really need to look at him anymore. These are the two that I'm looking at. Draw a line. The C's will go. Let's add correctly downward. Positive 4A coupled with a negative 1A, 3A. Positive 2B coupled with a negative 1B, plus 1B, is equal to negative 4 added to 1, negative 3. I'll just circle him from right now. Just kind of circle him for, for a moment. We're going to rewrite him. We're going to get him up there. Let's go over here. Let's do the same thing. Tuck the top. Tuck the bottom. Negative 1. There and there. Negative 1A negative 1b, negative 1c is equal to negative 4. Draw the line. Don't really need to look at him anymore. Positive 9a coupled with a negative 1a is 8a. Positive 2b, c's go, is equal to 0. There is the second one. So what did we do initially? We identified C as our choice to eliminate. When they, we picked two different pairs of equations with our goal to get this system of equations in three variables broken down to converted to a system of two equations and two variables. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to let you know, folks, as we resume on this, you can see down here we have now come up with our two linear equations and two variables that we're going to write in standard form and find our values of A and B. I transferred the original system over there to the right. So I'll take this 3A plus B is equal to negative 3, and let me elevate it up here. 3a plus b is equal to negative 3. And the second one, 8a plus 2b is equal to 0. Now I'm going to get rid of this, so we have some room. here. We solve this system using elimination and the end result it's going to give us values of A and B. And that value of A, whatever that's going to be, that A is going to be substituted in place of this A in this model. 
and the B is going to be substituted in place of that B variable in this model. And then we'll eventually find C, and C will go right there, and we'll have our quadratic function. But we have to use elimination so that we can get our A's and our B values. Now you can get rid of the A's or you can get rid of the B's, it doesn't matter, but it would be easier and less time consuming if we get rid of the B. Reason? The coefficient of 2 is a multiple of the coefficient of B in the other equation, which is 1. 2 is evenly divisible by 1. However, 8 is not a multiple of 3. So if we wanted to get rid of the A's, we'd have to multiply both sides of both equations by a respective number to obtain opposites of A. We're going to get rid of B. He's a positive 2. I want him to become a negative 2. If we multiply both sides of the top equation by negative 2, we'll have it. So tuck, tuck multiply the left by negative 2 and the right by negative 2. Negative 2 times 3a, negative 6a. Negative 2 times positive 1b, a negative 2b, and negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. Draw the line, the b's go, add correctly, 2a is equal to add 6 over 2, over 2, A is equal to 3. I'm just going to note that right here. Now, knowing that A is 3, now we can find the value of B. You can pick the top equation or the bottom one. It doesn't matter. I'm going to go ahead and maybe just pick this top one again. 3A plus B is equal to negative 3. Just make sure that you're copying that information correctly. Now the value of A is 3. So we're going to substitute 3 in place of that A. 3 times 3 plus B is equal to negative 3. 9 plus B is equal to negative 3. Negative 9. Negative 9 B is equal to negative 12. And now with those two values identified, now we can find the value of C. So over here, go to any one of those original linear equations. The top one's good. Let's use it. A plus B plus C is equal to 4. A is 3, so we'll substitute 3 in place of A, plus the value of B, which is negative 12, plus C is equal to 4. Combine like terms. Negative 9 plus C is equal to 4. Positive 9, positive 9, C is equal to 13. And now, folks, to give myself just a little bit of space, we don't need any. I just don't want a lot of this collateral right here. I don't want it in the way as we do now. Our final step. Now, there's the model. But now we're going to write the actual quadratic function that would contain those three points that we had identified at the beginning and as well give us a parabola. Bring down the y. Bring down the equal. Your a? 3. So it will be 3x squared. Your b is a negative 12. Don't need to put the plus sign. As a matter of fact, we ordinarily ignore it negative 12x, and your c is a positive 13, and there is the quadratic function that if we were to take the time and graph it, 
it would give us a parabola. It would give us the graph of that literal quadratic function. So it was a bit time consuming. It is. It is. But I believe it's pretty straightforward. Folks, the key thing in chapter 3 before we just close it off. When you're using the graphing method, when you're using the substitution method, when you're using the elimination method to solve a system of equations in two variables, no matter which method you use, you need to make sure that you write big enough on your sheet of paper, you need to make sure that you check that you have copied the information correctly, and watch out for your computations. It happens to me, and it'll happen to you. We've got to be careful. And you need to even be more careful when you're solving a system of linear equations in three variables, which will contain three equations. You even have to be more careful that you honor the things in the right way. That puts a close to Chapter 3. We'll be moving into Chapter 4. You take care of yourself, and you be good. Bye-bye.